Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Brianna Lenz and in today's video, we are talking about 25 pink glitter and aqua Christmas cross-stitch patterns. Hello there, Merry Christmas. We are only a few weeks away from Christmas now and it is time to do another Christmas cross-stitch pattern video. Today we're only doing 25 versus my typical 50 patterns video because this is a much more narrow theme. There are very popular pink cross-stitch patterns that we've seen for Christmas, but there aren't very many of them. So uh, if you are new here, hello, I'm Brianna Lenz and I do a lot of these 50 videos. Right now I'm doing a lot of Christmas cross-stitch pattern videos, but I've done them for fall, Halloween, and now Christmas. And I have said that I would do this pink glitter and aqua pattern video, which I'm very happy to do. I love making these. And uh, coming up will be a snowman video and a winter video. I plan on doing the snowman video before Christmas, I believe. And then the winter video will come out after Christmas when we're all kind of ready. We're decompressing from Christmas. We're thinking about New Year's and we're thinking about the winter to come. So if this is the first time you've seen one of these types of videos, I am going to be on this side of the screen with a picture of the cross-stitch pattern that I am discussing. Also, I will be looking down at my computer because everything, every single pattern that I discuss today will be on its own post at briannalentz.com where you will see a post, I'll have it linked down below, where it says 25 um, pink glitter and aqua Christmas cross-stitch patterns. There, you will see everything that I discussed today in parallel, chronologically, to what I'm discussing today with a picture. And underneath will have the name of the pattern, as well as a link to where I found you can purchase it from. Hopefully from the designer first, and then if there's someone third party, a third party shop, that being Etsy or 123 Stitch, that's where I'll have you linked. So if you ever see a picture of a pattern and you would like to see like how that name is written, just hit that link to my website down below and you'll see the picture of the pattern that you're looking for with the name of it with a designer underneath. I always give credit um, to all of those types of things. So if, if I go too fast for you, you can always slow down the video as well. And if you'd like to see things closer in the video, you can also magnify the video. So let's go ahead and get started today. So again, we're only doing 25, so this video should be shorter. And I have decided to start my video today. Let me scoot over. I decided to start my video today with um, Country Cottage Needleworks. So Country Cottage Needleworks has the Glitter Village, which is a wonderful nine part series that you can stitch all together or you can stitch these individually for ornaments or you can do them in pillows. Depends on how, maybe, you know, if you want to do just a trio, that's beautiful. But at Country Cottage Needleworks on her website, she has this digitalized version of the pattern. Um, so where you can get an idea of what it looks like if you were to stitch all nine of the Glitter Village patterns together. This is how she has it set up to, to stitch. And I really, you get all of the pastels in this and I really do enjoy it. I think she did a wonderful, wonderful job with this. And I think that, oh, excuse me. I think that it is up to you how glittery you want to make this pattern. You know, you can add the glitter, you can add the, the well, not the filament, but you can add the, the cranic, you can add the wispy thread. I mean, it just kind of is up to you. Like I could definitely see a lot of beads going into this and it'd be really, really pretty. And I also wanted to add another one by Country Cottage Needleworks. And that is the Welcome to the Forest Pink Cottage. This is separate from the Glitter Village. This is part of, a, of another series. However, this one alone could stand alone. This pattern could stand alone and would be really cute for you to have on a display. If you have just like a small pink display, um, like in years past, I've had, actually this is the first of like four years that I don't have it up. I would have a, a white, what do they call that? Where they have like all of like the, the fake snow on it. And I had like a small tree like that. I mean, it was like tall, but it was skinny. And then we had all of our pink and glitter aqua pastel ornaments on it with all the animals, unicorns, all that really fun stuff. Um, we didn't put it up this year because the box wasn't closed all the way and it was out in our 
out in our garage and it's just, it needs to be replaced. So we are going for a simpler Christmas, but I would do that in the front room. And then in this room, I would have my Buffalo plaid rustic Christmas, but this year I'd be having this tree. But all that to say, like, depending on the size of your house, like you can have pink glitter aqua in a bathroom. You could do it just in, you know, your, one of the bedrooms, your kids' bedrooms, your bedroom, just if, or just like a small spot. If you just want to have something playful, it doesn't have to be like what you do throughout your house, but it could, it could be fun. So, um, following Country Cottage Needleworks, there is a, another designer that I don't believe I've mentioned on my videos before. And I Google translated this. I'm going to try to pronounce it. The, the designer's name is in Italian and it's Chiore Ibat di Chiore, which is, um, I don't remember. I think it's like heart and heartbeat. So something similar to that. Don't quote me on it. Google it. But, uh, the first pattern I have is Natalie and Rosa, which is Christmas in pink in English. And this is so pretty. And she has quite a few of these whimsy patterns like this, but I love the female elf in her really elongated hat, her coat. It's just so feminine. I think this is so pretty. I could really see this in a shabby chic house. And honestly, like I could see somebody having this up all year long, but to me, this reads so beautifully with shabby chic and I don't know what happened to shabby chic, but I love watching shabby chic feeds on Instagram. Like they just bring me so much joy to look at. <laughs> I'm very dark and rustic, but I, I could easily flip to shabby chic. It's just that, um, everything is so light colored and I'm harder on my things. And so the darker decor works out more in my favor and my personality, <laughs> but I love Shabby Chic and I could see this pattern specifically going so well in a Shabby Chic home. And then you also have, um, Vigilia di Natale, which is, um, you know, Christmas Eve, Christmas village, I believe in Italian. And so cute. You just have these little super cute elves with the aqua and the angel. And there's just so much playfulness in this one pattern that you don't see very often and the little bows and everything. I would like to see this pattern or this designer go bigger. I know she's not a, an American designer, but you can find a lot of her patterns at one, two, three stitch. And so if you are interested in this style, I encourage you to go to one, two, three stitch, Google this designer. And she really has a lot of fun, playful, whimsy, um, patterns and, and bigger patterns are oh, just so adorable. Oh, and then I have one more, which is peace on earth. And you have this beautiful angel, and this beautiful Christmas village. I mean, a, a lot of these could be stitched on their own. Like you could just do the angel. You could just do the village. But I mean, she even finishes it off with the framing in the corners. It's just so well done. And then the angel's wearing ice skates and peppermint striped socks. It's just so cute. Very cute. I know. I know. Cute is what I like to say. But gosh darn it. That's adorable. Love all of the details. So I mean, if you're a person that isn't afraid of stitching details, I, I love that. So from that Italian designer, we're going to go to Brenda Gervais with thy needle and thread. And we're going to talk about reindeer games because in all three of these, this trio of patterns, you have this beautiful aqua that translates through each of the patterns, the presents, the house, and the reindeer's Christmas sweaters. Really adorable. I've seen a lot of people starting to stitch this this year. And so if you haven't seen this before, it's really cute and would be a great um, ornament finish as well. And then you also, so that's called reindeer games. And then I found basket full of winter and I really like this. I like that Santa's carrying the peppermint and you've got the, you know, just all of like these typical motifs but it's very playful so like if you just wanted to add a pop of color but not go too far out of your scheme i think this would be a great candidate and if you like you know brenda gervais patterns i think this would be really fun i like the flowers a lot this would marry really well with the we santa 2023 by heart and hand needle art i think this would marry really really well then you also have plum pudding which is super cute you can play with the colors on this one um, so that way they're more pink and more glittery and more aqua. There is the red, but I could easily see you changing out the red and then putting like pink in there. But you have the flower, which looks like a thimble or not a thimble, but like a, um, where are my words? Where is my mind? Uh, 
a spool of thread and then the really cute baked treat. So honestly, I would just, oh, and the rolling pin, I would change some of the colors and then this would really go pink and glitter if you're looking for that. Loser is the green in the top mouse's dress, but you could easily like make that more dramatic if you wanted to. Um, then I have one from Emily Call, which is Jolly Old Elf. Super cute. I like the expression on Santa's face and the pink quilting stars in the snow. Very adorable. Um, following Emily Call, I have Shannon Christine, and she has a lot of pink and glitter. And this is one that I haven't really seen very often, and it's Sugar Plum Village. This is one that I saw on 123 Stitch that you could buy the entire set to, to stitch for like $18, which is pretty great because I think I bought the Bright Gingerbread Mitten, which I'll show you in just a minute, for like $8. So to have this many patterns for $18 from this designer is a fantastic deal. Because this is another one where you can stitch them all together or you can stitch them separately. You have the sleigh ride, you have the skates, cocoa, stitch, shop, bakery, you have the village on top, and you ha even have the border. You don't have to go to a third party website to find a border. Like this includes the border to go on it, and it is just fantastic. And I can't believe I don't see more people stitching this. So, Sugar Plum Village, I love this one. And all of the snowy details. Like, the more you look at it, the more details that you see. Like, she just really packed so much in here. And if you would like a companion piece to a lot of Country Cottage Needleworks, this would be a great contender. This would, if you're a Country Cottage Needleworks, Little House Needleworks stitcher, um, this might be up your alley. This is different from some of the stuff that she's doing now, but I definitely see this going well with that time period of charts that were coming out back in like the 2017 era. I don't know when this pattern was released, but let's see. Um, another one that I had never seen before was Christmas Stamp Collection. And I think this is really original. You could do each of these on their own little pillow. You could just stitch this and do it on a card, on a tag. Like there are a lot of things that you can take from this one pattern to make multiple different things. If you do junk journaling, you could easily stitch one of these. It wouldn't take that long and stitch it to be the cover of your junk journal. That's something that I'm personally, I would like to do. I want to uh, transfer my stitching into some other things and not just as decor. Like I really want to um, multimedia my cross stitching in the future. And so if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button to my channel because I have a lot of really cool stuff coming out this following year. I've got, I just want to do all of the things that I've thought about, but I haven't executed. And so this coming year, if I'm, I'm just, I'm going to make my list and I'm going to do it all. And this is one of the things that I've really wanted to do, especially on my channel. So, um, so stay tuned. I've got some cool ideas coming out. If if you are interested in diversifying how you finish your cross stitch. Uh, let's see, I've got two more. So the, the following pattern that I'm showing is right gingerbread mat. I'm currently stitching this right now. This is really cute. It's very detail oriented, um, but it is really pretty. Like I can't wait to see this pattern fully stitched up because that Fair Isle mitten is coming out gorgeously sometimes when you see the digital patterns like you don't realize like how pretty it could be once it's all stitched up and this one is going to be beautiful and I'm so glad I'm stitching it it's really pretty that pink mitten is just so beautiful so beautiful and then finally we have right gin no sorry I'm reading the same thing twice this is called titled 2021 Christmas Club 4 that's all that's what it's titled but you have two patterns. You have the panda, the panda bear, the polar bear and be joyful. And I love the polar bear. You really don't see that. And you have the vintage ornaments in there. So this is something that absolutely, I think I could see people stitch more often. And this is probably something that I'd like to pick up to stitch next year as well. Um, I don't have time to stitch it this year, but I'm going to earmark this as something that I would like to stitch next year. Cause I think it's really sweet and my kids would really like it. They would, they would absolutely love me to stitch these. And they do coincide together. Those vintage ornaments in there is really, really pretty. I like that one, that one a lot. I like Shannon Christine designs a lot. 
Um, following her, I'm going to be sharing Barbara Anna Designs. Barbara Anna Designs is a very whimsical designer. Uh, first, I'm going to share Christmas hair, and this is actually one that I stitched last year. This was really fun, and I did I stitched it on the same green fabric, and the yellow and the blue really pop. Then you have Santa writing a Christmas hair. I mean, you don't see that very often, and the Santa was just really fun. I mean, and you see it like he's just the hat's blowing in the wind. This is very original. I love this one. Fast stitch. Highly recommend it. So following that one, we have another really fun one that in my mind, this could be stitched as a set. This one's a lot bigger, but you have Christmas is coming and you have Santa instead of writing a bunny rabbit, you're right. He's writing a snail. Same type of Santa, just shrinked down. Yeah, just shrink down. And then you have the quilt stars in the background as the lights. And honestly, it looks like he's pulling a sandcastle, to be honest with you. But I mean, that is just so original and unique. I haven't seen another pattern like this one. Love that. Uh, following Barbara Anna Designs, I wanted to share one from Calico Confectionery. And a child is born. This one is really unique, too, because most of the time that you see uh, Silent Night or Let Us Rejoice and A Child is Born, those types of religious Christmas patterns, you have pretty traditional color palettes as well. But with this one, you have the beautiful pink in the background, a child is born, the beautiful angels, and then you have the little Jesus in the bottom and all the horns and trumpets and adornments. I mean, I just think this is a spectacular pattern and one that I think if you do like to do religious stitching, um, I would put this up there. And if you don't like the pink and aquas, you can make those more traditional just as easily. But I really do like this a lot. And I would love to see this one stitched more often. Uh, following Calico Confectionery, we're going to go ahead and go to Miss Bold Satsuma Street. And she has so much fun with her stitching. I love it so much. So first of all, we have the Noel Sampler. And... I mean, goodness, doesn't that look like so much fun? It's so bright, so joyful. And honestly, like if you have a little girl or a, like if you have young grandchildren, um, this would be so much fun to have up in their room. I mean, even in your room, who knows like how you decorate, but I, I just, I think that my daughter would love this and the colors are just so fun and warming and like, when I grew up, I grew up in Southern California, so we had warm winters. And so there was a lot of uh, beach themed Christmas decor and like the beach houses and the beach cottages like in Laguna and Newport Beach and stuff. And so I think that these brighter palettes would really go well if you have like one of those beachier homes. I mean, even on the East Coast and the Carolinas, I'm just not familiar with that because I grew up in Southern California. But if you do have like that coastal cottage vibe in your house, I really think that these would play well and you're decorating if you don't do the darker traditional. Um, next, I also wanted to share deck the halls because you have a pink reindeer, you've got a green tree with pink angels, and then a beautiful, just everything is just really pretty and so bright and would just, just stands out, I love it. So you have deck the halls so you can finish it as a banner or you can stitch them individually as she shows. And then I also wanted to share Joy because I think all three of these could marry well together. She has more patterns that are really bright, but um, I think I really liked the, the Joy because I think that that's another fun playfulness of the vintage ornaments, but really bright, bold color blocking. So if, you, if you like the color blocking more, I think this would be a good option. And it looks like a lot of stitching, but you're not having to change colors and it's not going to be confetti heavy. All right, following Satsuma Street, we have Stitching with the Housewives, which she is, Priscilla's going in a different, um, a different lane here. Like she always shows you what she's going to be doing, right? Like if you're paying attention, she gives you Easter eggs. Like she's like the Taylor Swift of stitching, right? I can't believe I said that, but it's true. Like she'll, she hints at things before she releases them. Just like if you pay attention to Taylor, I'm not a Swifty, but I mean, she is a marketing genius. And, you know, when you watch Priscilla, she's got the different chalkboard things in the background. So like, if you know, she's got certain drawings that she's showing you in her Instagram feed, she knows, you know, that she's teasing you for a chart to come in the next year or two. 
And so she has her vintage bobble tree, right? And now she's got vintage Christmas. She's done the chalkboard. She's done brown. She's done blue, aqua. So now she's going over to pink. And she's got this really playful vintage Christmas, which if you really enjoy how she does her patterns, like this would be really fresh, fresh and big. So a lot of these patterns that I've shown you were like individualistic. This would be a really cool way to, um, bring it all together. And even just for the vintage Christmas typography that she has on there alone, that'd be super fun to put on a pillow. Um, that's the only one that I'm going to share though, but I do probably, I mean, I know she's got more that she's released with pink fabric and stuff in the background, but that wasn't enough for me to, um, include all of them in today's video. However, she does have more patterns out there with pink fabric. And that's another great option is if you see something that is like, chalkboard or cartoony or just playful you could always put it on pink fabric and it would be just the same right same effect okay moving on to Erin Elizabeth I I have not shared Miss Erin on here before but she had two patterns I believe just two that I'm sharing today yeah and she has love peace joy I like this a lot and this is another one that you can dissect and get a bunch of different small patterns small ornaments out of one chart or you can do it all together then she has a really, um, I like her frame. I like her frame choice a lot. I like that she has a lot of the snowflakes on the outside. I like how she played with the different colors and it's just really sweet. And I thought, oh yeah, I have to include this. And then you have the snowman holding the bird. I love that. Love it. Love it. And then she also has ho, ho, ho. And this is stitched on black, but you could easily translate this over to any color fabric that you want. And uh, she, this is more like the greens and pinks. Very simple, very cute. That would stitch up pretty quickly, even with all the seemingly like color changes. That shouldn't be too difficult. And I wanted to to end this with Shepherd's Bush. And I just realized I didn't, because uh, I was talking about heart and hand, and I meant to put heart and hand needle art patterns in my video today. Um, a lot of her patterns I was actually saving from my other videos because I wanted to put them in today's video but if you um I would also recommend just going to heart and hand needle art and she's got a lot of different um pink and glitter and aqua Christmas patterns that are really really cute too so if you follow her on Instagram or if you don't she shows them a lot but you can also go to one two three stitch and just look it up because she doesn't sell them herself I don't think or just google you just google it and she's got a lot of previous patterns that she's released that are really beautiful and that fit today's theme. But lastly, I'm going to be finishing off my video today with Shepherd's Bush. And I am falling in love with Shepherd's Bush stockings more and more and more. And I have never stitched a stocking. Um, a lot of the Dimensions Kit stockings are very appealing to me, but um, I like the Dimensions Kits in general. So there's a lot that I would like to just stitch as as regular kits, not necessary stockings, but the Shepherd's Bush stockings are some that I, I don't know. I just think that, uh, I would really like to, if I were to stitch a stocking, I think it would be a Shepherd's Bush stocking. And I'm going to share three that fit today's theme. First being Sadie's stocking. And it's hard to see in their pictures, all of the details. Um, so I know it's going to be hard to see in the picture over here, but you can go um, and click and see the picture up close on my website. But you have Sadie's stocking. Then you have Mary's stocking, which is very pink and light and pastel. And then lastly, I chose Elizabeth's stocking. I mean, gosh, they just look so precious, don't they? And so that's what I decided to end my video with today because shepherd's bush christmas stockings are just phenomenal and i am just i'm every year I f i'm falling more and more in love with them i have actually never stitched anything from shepherd's bush so i think that if i could get a kit like a, a whole stocking kit from shepherd's bush i don't even know if they sell those that would probably be what like i would just hunker down like i'm just craving these bigger projects <sighs> So yeah, we might, and that might need to happen next year or the year after. We'll see. But much shorter video today, but I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. Um, if you don't already, now would be a great time to subscribe to my channel. So that way you don't miss any of my upcoming 50 pattern videos. 
that I'm going to be releasing. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I have, will have it linked down below, but I'm at Brianna underscore lens on Instagram. I'd love to see you there. And, um, you know, these are just so much fun to make. I hope that you're enjoying your Christmas season and I hope that you're having like a seasonal December. We're having a warm December where we are in Southeastern Oklahoma. But I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Happy stitching!